Welcome to the Macros for Life podcast, where we talk all things macros, business, and marriage. We are your hosts, Eve and Randall Guzman. Visit our website at www.gtransformationacademy.com, where you can download our free How to Track Macros guide. This guide has helped over 15,000 people start their macro tracking journey. Hey you guys, welcome back to the Macros for Life podcast. This week I'm going to be talking about gaining weight after being in a deficit. Most no, most specifically talking about a question I got um, when someone DM'd me and they were like, hey, here's my scenario. Um, I am feeling a little bit desperate and I don't know what to do. I lost 30 pounds a few years ago, and this was before this person had knowledge of like dieting and maintenance um, and the tools to use for fat loss, muscle building, all of that stuff. And she went on an extreme calorie deficit. So knowing what she knows now, she knows this deficit was really extreme. Um, she was doing cardio every single day and an hour of strength training every single day. And she knew that it wasn't sustainable. And you guys know what typically happens when we venture into anything that isn't sustainable, relationships um, with dieting, hobbies, maybe like you decided to get a job that had like a 75 minute commute and you know that that wasn't something you were gonna be able to keep up with. Um, she ended up gaining weight back after this deficit. Um, and so after that happened, she stopped tracking and started just focusing on being good to her body, focusing on building muscle and getting strength. And she's been weight training. She's been prioritizing protein, um, also has really good, human, good, food habits now. Sorry, you guys, I got Invisalign recently. Um, and now she really views food as fuel. And so she knows the importance of nutrition periodization now. Um, after the deficit, she gained weight and since then had to, since then had been scared to get on the scale. And she knows that she went into a surplus um, and this is just recounting what she said and had been loose with her nutrition. And now it's been three years later and she's wanting to know, is it wise to even consider another fat loss phase, um, after three years of time. And I came back with some advice to her that was something that we actually experience a lot. I have done some extreme diets. You've probably done an extreme diet in some time. And the one thing that gets me is people go, I know what to do. I know how to lose weight because there was this time that I lost weight. I lost 25 pounds. I looked my best and I felt my best. And that was the thing that worked for me, but I gained weight back and not just like a little bit of weight because weight gain after being on in a diet is normal. Like you should be gaining a little bit of weight after. Um, it's going to vary on the person, the genetics. Did you have a post diet plan? Um, are you lifting? What's your activity? How did things change? Did you change the types of foods? I mean, just so much stuff, stress, biomechanics. I mean, just so many things, right? But, you know, gaining a small amount of weight is normal. But if you guys have done a diet that you know was extreme and you lose weight, and then you gain everything back, potentially plus more, the diet didn't work. We want to start to look at diets in a way where it is a tool that we're using at the time to get to a goal. And after the fact, we're reversing out of it, but we want to come out of a deficit better. We don't want to come out exactly where we started. We don't want to be worse than. So if you did a really crazy diet and you gained all of the weight back plus more and feel worse, more than likely um, that diet should not be classified as being successful. Um, but let's take a deep dive into what might have happened um, with this person who gained this weight 
and then thinks now that they're in a surplus and that's why the weight has, you know, went back up and things like that. More than likely, they went into a surplus against where they were before. So let's say she was on this crazy extreme diet and let's say um, her total daily energy expenditure is normally like 2000 calories to maintain her weight. And then went on a crazy deficit diet that was a thousand calories every day on like a low calorie meal plan, her 30 minutes of cardio every day, her hour of strength training every day. I mean, she's literally went into a 1000 calorie deficit, give or take, um, you know, minding things like meat, thermic effect of food, also being mindful um, of some of the calories that she's burning, that we cannot keep taps tabs on down to a T for every single calorie um, with like our Fitbits, Apple Watches, and all of that stuff. She may have went from a 2,000 calorie maintenance to a 1,000 calorie deficit, lost a lot of weight really fast. Our bodies are made to adapt to the number of calories that we're eating to become more efficient. And literally we're just stretching out what we're being given. So going into a higher calorie intake after being in a deficit, we have a new maintenance, we have a new surplus, and those numbers come down a lot. She might've been at a 1000 calorie deficit, used to be able to eat 2000 calories at maintenance, and then jumping to 1,700 calories or so after the 1,000 calorie diet, that may be her new surplus. Like her maintenance has changed drastically. Um, studies have shown that our BMRs can be reduced as much as 15% following really um, in really deep diets that are definitely on the extreme end. And so more than likely, her new maintenance was lower her new surplus um, where she was gaining weight may not have been a surplus before because she has a new adapted maintenance. This is where the weight gain is happening for most people. It's not necessarily just the types of foods they're eating. Their baseline has now changed and there is a new maintenance. And a lot of people just think of it as the diet failed completely you know, parts of that, you know, give or take may be true, but they think that it may be them. It may be their willpower. It may be a bunch of different things. Um, and so when someone has something like that happens, they need to find their new maintenance. And so what I would recommend to someone that may find themselves a month out after the diet, you know, three years in her case after the diet is like, let's find your new maintenance. It may be different. And it may not be that bad, but it also involves getting data. That means we're going to have to track. We're going to have to weigh our food properly. We're also going to have to get on the scale and face our fears to find out what our new maintenance is. And so what I would recommend is you calculate your um, total daily energy expenditure. And that is just theoretical. That's where you should be. But don't let that number get you down because maintenance is floating. Um, it's floating, you know, give or take about 100 calories for some people. So if your maintenance is 1900, when you calculate it, and let's say that is utterly just true for you, and it is where your maintenance is, your floating maintenance might be like, 1850 to 1950. It might be 1800 to 2000. Some people have a little bit more um, flexibility depending on genetics, body type, all of that. But calculate your maintenance calories and start tracking at that number. Track everything you eat. And I don't mean three days, you guys, it's not enough data. I don't mean seven days, it's not enough data. I mean for like two to three weeks. Track everything you're eating and weigh every single day. Come out with 21 sets of data points, meaning you're getting that information from 21 days of tracking, 21 days of taking your measurements, um, like from start to end, 21 days of scale weights, and then the before photos, the after photos. You're going to want two sets of measurements, two sets of photos, 21 days of tracking, and 21 days of scale weight. And then look in an app like Happy Scale. You can also look in Macros First, which I highly recommend. Take a look at it 
and see, are you at maintenance? Or is your weight starting to go up? Is it starting to go down? If your weight's going down, you're not at maintenance and you're, you're in a deficit. If you're staying there, you're at maintenance. If your weight's creeping up a little bit, but also take this with a grain of salt because it really takes almost four weeks of you seeing the scale go up above three or four pounds and trending higher to truly say that you're gaining weight and you're in a surplus. So you may have to track for a month, month and a half. But you have to be honest with all of this data. You've got to track every single bite, lick and taste, um, even when when you are tasting some soup that you're making on the stove, even when you are making your sandwich. You guys know I love sandwiches. I'm team sandwich, team carbs, team Sam Sammy's for life. And you're putting the deli meat on. Are you sneaking a piece out of the package and eating it and it's not getting weight? Like those are all the things we have to think about. But for us to be able to know where we're going, we have to know where we're at. Um, so like what gets managed needs to be measured first. We can't make a game plan. We can't see where we're at. We can't see how things are good or bad without getting this data, um, taking a look at this number. But when you go and track everything against where your maintenance potentially should be, take a look at that and then do a deep dive into how long have I been eating like this? Have I been eating close to these maintenance numbers honestly? Um, or have I been eating above? Because now when I'm doing this little test, I'm now trying to um, eat cleaner foods. I'm eating at home. I'm eating out less, you know, all of those types of things. Like, because, you know, you're now being aware of like, man, I'm snacking on all of these little things in between. But um, really take a deep dive and go, have I been at maintenance for a month? Have I been in a surplus potentially for three months? Um, have I been ma at maintenance for a while? And my recommendation, if you are someone who wants to go after an aesthetic, a health goal, a weight goal, whatever it is, I'm definitely not here to judge you guys. I recommend a minimum of being at maintenance for at least six months. Maintenance, you guys, is hard. It's a different type of beast. Like the carrot dangling in front of you isn't as um, attractive. It's not as sexy. It's not like, yes, I'm at maintenance every day and I love it. I mean, it's easier to be looser at maintenance, um, but I recommend six months of being at maintenance before trying to go into a deficit. But after that, let's not repeat history. Let's not go back and hop into these 25 and 30 and 40% deficits. If you have had a little bit of a traumatic experience after dieting with a lot of weight gain, um, emotions are running high, you know, body consciousness, body consciously like you're sensitive, start with a smaller deficit. It would definitely be to your advantage to see if you can get a great result without doing it aggressively, because all of the evidence shows the more aggressively we lose weight, those people have a higher tendency to gain weight back gain all the weight back and gain more weight back than where they had originally started. So try starting with starting with a 15% deficit, focus on moderate protein. That's probably going to be 0.7 grams of protein per pound of your body weight or higher. Um, we can help you out if we need more help with that. Going higher fiber, that's 25 grams a day for women. That's 30 to 35 grams a day, maybe a little bit higher um, for men. And focus on weight training. Um, when you go on a deficit, you guys, we're pulling out different tools of the trade and what you're doing in a deficit should not be utterly different than what you do at maintenance. The biggest thing that we want to focus on where the deficit should be coming from is your nutrition. Most of your fat loss, your weight loss should be coming from the nutrition. Because when we were at maintenance before, we should have been focusing on building muscle and preparing our bodies to be its best and to maintain the highest muscle mass possible. And we don't want to use the cardio as a tool to lose weight. We want to start with nutrition first. Like your first week going into a deficit, you should be walking, strength training, and then tracking your food in a deficit. We add in these other tools as we need them 
And as we go, but so many people start off with the one hour of weight training and 30 minutes of cardio seven days a week and changing their foods and going into a deficit and cutting out alcohol. Like it is a lot. And so to have some extreme weight loss by doing things that are extreme against your baseline, you will have a higher tendency to gain that weight back. Um, so focus on your neat activity and your steps before adding in tons of cardio and like layer that stuff in um, so that you are able to use the cardio as a tool as you need it. Because when we're in a maintenance phase, we're wanting to build muscle. When we're in a fat loss phase, building muscle is very hard to do unless you are a newbie. Um, there's a small chance of newbie gains, but we really want to be focusing on preserving muscle keeping our metabolic rate high and reducing adaptations to exercise and the calorie deficits that we're putting our selves through. Now, one of the other things that I do want to mention um, is body fat set point, because a lot of people will come in and say, you know, there are a lot of people that diet, and this may have been you too, that you go back up to a weight or body composition that you have been at before. And you're like, I can never get past that number. My body's comfortable at that number. There's definitely some science to be said to that. And that really has to do with adaptations that we're having in our deficit that are affecting our leptin levels and are also affecting our thyroid activity. And so when we're going into a deficit, our leptin levels drop. As we're losing fat, our leptin levels are going to drop even a little bit more. And so how leptin works, it is um, helping us know whether we're satiated or not. And it ties into ghrelin and it can signal when we need to eat um, more, which can also lead to some overeating. And so the longer that we're in a deficit, the smaller that we get or the leaner that we get and we start losing more of our stored body fat, um, we do start to get hungrier. But as we're losing this weight, our fat cells are shrinking. This is something we're wanting, right? Yes, right. Um, and then they're also becoming more insulin um, sensitive. And this can be good, but it can also be bad at the same time. So as the human body is designed, we don't have just fat cells that decrease um, in size and increase in size as we're actually gaining weight. There has been some evidence that has been shown that we do have the potential to create new fat cells under like the right conditions, under the right circumstances. And some of those can be when leptin drops and when thyroid levels, like our thyroid hormone levels are lower. And when does that happen? It happens when we're in a deficit, Ghrelin goes up in a deficit, BMR drops, meat drop, um, our, th our thyroid levels drop, our conversion with T3 and T4 is also decreasing, um, and leptin is, is also low. This research has been showing that there are some people that are regaining weight and may have the production of new fat cells under some of these more extreme cases. Um, and so it is something um, to definitely think about, but what can we do to not have something like this happen and kind of increase our chances of it not happening is to focus on body composition over body weight and focusing on um, building muscle, preserving muscle, eating enough protein, getting enough stim stimulation when it comes to muscle hypertrophy and cleaning, increasing our thermic effect of food with cleaner, more whole foods and things that we're eating, um, having more rest, um, relying on most of our fat loss or weight loss to come from a calorie deficit versus pounding on a calorie deficit and a weight loss deficit um, at the same, or sorry, a calorie deficit and then a deficit coming from doing exercise, like trying not to have all of those things happening at the same time and just going slower, 
but smarter and not digging in so deep. Um, and so these are some of the things that we definitely have to think about when we're always, you know, going back and going, man, that diet I did before, like that was the one that worked. But is that truly the diet that worked? Um, if you're someone that is starting back at day one where you have um, your initial goals, and have all of these aspirations of coming out with a new aesthetic goal, performance goal, weight goal, whatever it is. And so it's definitely something to be mindful of. So although fast may look super attractive, doing it in a slow, steady way is definitely the way to go. All right, if you guys have any other questions about weight gain after being in a deficit or maintenance questions, make sure you guys shoot them over to me at Eve Guzman Official, or you can shoot them um, to us on the Macros for Life podcast Instagram page. See you guys on the next one. Thanks for listening to our podcast today. Make sure you like, share, and tag us on Instagram. Also, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future episodes. In the meantime, be healthy and get wealthy.